When the committee discussed possible candidates for induction, I was attempted to veto Gary Gaetti. After all, he helped the Minnesota Twins beat the Cardinals in the 1987 World Series. We can't put this guy in. He had a home run, a double in game two. At 259, drove in four runs, sold two bases, and of course played a flawless third base in that series. I'm just kidding about vetoing him, of course. The only problem I had with Gary is that he wasn't in St. Louis long enough, just two and a half seasons. He joined a long list of outstanding third basemen in Cardinal history. Scott Rowland, Kenny Boyer, Terry Fenelon, Kenny Reitz. Wish he could have finished his career here. A native of Centralia, he was selected three times in the draft. On the third time, he signed with the Twins. For nine seasons, he was a fixture at third base for Minnesota, winning four consecutive gold gloves. Hit a home run, his first major league at bat. That's happened a number of times over the years, but... Gary is the home run king of all players who homered in their first at bat in the postseason. He hit home runs in his first two postseason at bats. He's the only guy to ever do that. He set a record by starting two triple plays in one game against Boston. That's never happened before in a major league game. At age 36, he hit 35 home runs for Kansas City in 1995 and then came to the Cardinals. He had two more productive seasons wearing the birds on the bat before he was released. He immediately signed with the Cubs, where he oh. hit 320 and helped them win the National League wild card. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell something about You know what CUBS means? <laughs> Completely useless by September. <laughs> I used to tell Cub fans any team can have a bad century, but unfortunately that doesn't work anymore. On his 40th birthday in 2007, the Minnesota Twins inducted Gary Guy and in the team's Hall of Fame. And tonight, we're excited to do the same. Welcome to the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame, Gary Guy and Aiden. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing to apologize for for Gary Guyton. Congratulations on uh, making your way back to Southern Illinois and being inducted into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. This is a good night. I'd like to say thank you to my family for coming over here, and I'm really proud of you guys for still being awake. <laughs> <laughs> well, back in the late 70s when you were drafted, and Ron mentioned you signed the, the third time you were drafted, it's a lot different now. A lot of a lot more players are going to college and getting drafted out of college. Why did you decide to go to Lincoln Land and then Northeast Missouri State? Well, if I remember right, when I was drafted by the Cardinals uh, coming out of my freshman year, it wasn't a real hard decision to make. I, they offered me $500, and I had four years or three years of college left, so I said, well, that's probably not enough. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I mean, I, I was <laughs> excited about playing for the home team, but it just it just didn't work out that time. Yeah. And obviously, the uh, staying in college benefited you because you were the 11th pick in the draft. Well, that didn't really work out the way I thought it was going to either, but <laughs> in the long run, it turned out pretty good. Why didn't it work out the way you thought it would? <laughs> well, they had this, what's called a supplemental draft, so I was taken in the January phase, and, and they just... Well, they found out I had an agent, and they didn't contact me for like two or three weeks. And I actually had to call them and ask them if they wanted me to play ball. So I guess when I did that, they sent the scout back over, and we made a deal. And I just wanted to play. You know, I just wanted to go out there and play. And once you worked your way through the twin system and got to the majors, and that team that wound up beating the Cardinals in the 87 World Series, that must have been so much fun because most of you guys came through the system together and were at the major, were young major league players together, right? That is correct. Um, we didn't always have a lot of fun. I mean, five years earlier, that same kind of core group of guys had lost 102 games and were getting beat up every night. So, I mean, you know, we learned through that process and. And uh, even that year, you know, you talk about the 87 World Series, and we did not have the best team in baseball. And, I mean, we probably, with the Cardinals at full strength, we probably were not as good as the Cardinals either, but they were missing three key players. But we got in the tournament, we got hot. And uh, we started believing in ourselves, and just things went our way. But, uh, I mean, I think the Cardinals were hurt with some injuries, and, you know, 
I mean, we won. Yeah, well, I'm not giving my ring back or anything like that. But, White, Whitey uh, said there was some metronome magic. Was there, was there some metronome magic there that was manufactured? Well, we weren't cheating or anything like that. <laughs> okay. I, I think they thought we were cheating up there, but no, I mean, we just, you know, we just had this thing at home. I think there were some issues with the stadium, you know, the ceiling and stuff for the visiting teams and the noise and stuff like that, but... Uh, you know, the, the actual, I did say I'm sorry, right? Because okay. when I came over to the Cardinals, I and mean, we had the same kind of team there in 96, I mean, we just played every inning of every game, and we just played it out. And it's just, you know, it's just how we, I guess we drew upon those years that we were, you know, 60 and 102, and, you know, then it got fun, and we started believing in ourselves, and we just, you know, we rolled it. What was it like for a Centralia kid to come to St. Louis, and we didn't have interleague play at that time. So it was your first game ever played at Bush Stadium. It was game three of the World Series. What was that like for you? Um, it was really weird. I mean, I did. I, I, I knew like my family was going to be there, and that was neat. And and just I'd seen so many games as a child growing up over there, and just. I love the stadium, and I mean, there's a really cool picture of me and Ken Arbeck and Kirby Puckett, and you know, I mean, I had had a tryout there, but I never played in the stadium. And there's a really nice picture of us looking, just looking at the stadium. It's just, it's just one of those moments for me. It's like, you know, this is really sentimental, but we're gonna kick your ass. <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> and I, I just, that was a special moment, it really was. I mean, I'm sure it was for them too, my family and everybody, and to see that, but. Um, I loved it here in St. Louis. It was good. Did you have it in your mind that at some point you were going to be a Cardinal? If, if, I thought that. Had to work growing out. up, I always thought that, but it didn't really work out. I'd have to say that probably one regret that I did have that I probably, after that World Series year, I'm, I, there was a lot of stuff going on with collusion and all that kind of stuff with free agency, and I had an outside shot of coming to the, same, to the Cardinals, and I didn't really pursue it you know and let some other things dictate what happened i think it i think i missed out i really do but you know i mean it turned out pretty good in the end yeah and then obviously because you got the world series ring and you do find your way here in 96 like you said with a really good gritty team that heck you're up 3-1 in the nlcs here game away from going to the world series against the yankees too that was going to be a special time I really felt we were supposed to do that. I mean, I remember telling Tony Larusso that time, and we had, you know, we had a pretty talented team, and we had, you know, I mean, maybe not the best, but Tony had a way of bringing it out of you. And I just told him, I said, you know what, this is one of the hardest playing group of guys that I've ever been with. You know, and I mean, I know you all know this guy, but he was so special that. If you saw this guy in a close ball game come up and be on deck and he took his helmet off and he was like scratching the top of his head, we were going to win if he got up there. Willie McGee was just, he was, a, he was typified what Cardinals baseball and what, you know, we were about that year. You had some great moments in your two and a half years with the Cardinals. Does anything stand out for you? What What's in your mind's eye? Um... I don't like to think about things that I did, but I do know this. There were a lot of times when I'd be standing <laughs> out there at third base and I'm just thinking, man, that's exactly how I used to smell in here when I was over out there in the left field bleachers <laughs> watching the game. <laughs> I mean, it was one of those warm, fuzzy things. It's just like, I just, I just love that. I just, I, I watched so many games and been in this ballpark so many times, I'll be out there playing. I was paying attention now. I mean, I wasn't like, you know, just like, man, that's that smell. I said, I'm red hot. So. <laughs> like, just, you know, I mean, they had cigarette. I guess you could smoke back then, but I mean, it was just one of those moments. It's just like, this is awesome. <laughs> Should have done this sooner. Uh, Gary is managing now the Sugarland Skeeters in Sugarland, Texas. You, you've stuck with it. You made a lot of money in baseball. You, you're, you're managing. You're still involved with the game. You've coached. Can you put into words your love of the game? I have been. 
I don't know, I have been blessed beyond measure with some talent and protected all the years by ignorance, I guess, and just, you know, just, and I think about what I do, and I, I mean, this is a tough act to follow, these guys, it's like, I don't really know if I really deserve to be sitting up here with, you know, these accomplishments and stuff like that, but you know, I don't want to short myself or not give credit to God about, you know, giving me the ability to do it, but I mean, it's just, when you love something like that, it's easy to do. When you love doing your job, it's it's easy to go and, and be the best you can be. I think it translates, and a couple guys up here might disagree with me. I mean, I think baseball's the great, greatest game in the world. America's favorite pastime, maybe not. But, I mean, the passion for that is... You know, it's kind of indescribable, it really does. I mean, you grow up doing this, you know, just for fun. And then when you get to that level where you can be the world champion, the way you do that is having fun like you did when you were a little kid, you know? And the kid from Centralia, Illinois, is back and is now a member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Gary Guyan, you're on the floor. Thank you. Thank you.